Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you that the k-means clustering algorithm will always converge in finitely many steps. Let's suppose there are n data points in the d-dimensional Euclidean space, and the k-mean algorithm is going to assign the n data points into k different clusters. Mathematically speaking, assignment is a surjective map that maps from the index set of the data points to the index set of the cluster um, in a way such that if the ith data point xi is assigned to the qth cluster then ai is equal to q so for example if there are uh, four data points and they are assigned to three different clusters in this particular way x1 is assigned to cluster 1 x2 and x4 are assigned to cluster 2 and x3 is assigned to cluster 3 that particular assignment can be expressed by this map. Now let's define the loss function for any assignment A and any vectors M1 through Mk. The inner summation is taken over all the i's such that Ai is equal to Q. Essentially this is saying we're going to take the sum of all these terms where the xi's are in the Qth cluster. So what does that mean? Well, we can think of these m's as the centers of the k clusters. Well, at this point, they're not really the centers of the clusters because they are really just any vectors. They can be any vectors in the, in the Euclidean space. But let's think of them as the center of the clusters. So this summation is the sum of the squared distance of each point to its, uh, to its cluster center. And the k-means algorithm goes like this. Uh, we start with a random assignment, let's call that A0, and we're trying to minimize the loss function with respect to the M's. In this minimization problem, the assignment is fixed, and this loss function is just a function of the M's. We need to find the M values such that the loss function is the minimum. Once we have these minimizers, uh, we fix the m values at the minimizers, and then we uh, minimize the loss function with respect to a, the assignment, and find another particular assignment. Let's call that a1. And we repeat this process. And what we're going to show is that the sequence of the assignments will eventually converge. And that will happen in finitely many steps. First of all, let's see how do we minimize the loss function L with respect to the M's when A is fixed. Let's suppose A is any fixed assignment. And we define for each cluster Q, we define this quantity. Mu of AQ is equal to this expression. The numerator is the summation of the xi's where a of i is equal to q. So this is the, the sum of the data points in the qth cluster. The denominator is the number of data points in the qth cluster. So altogether, this is the average of the data points in the qth cluster. For any m values in the d-dimensional Euclidean space, the loss function is greater than or equal to uh, the loss function when the m values are replaced by what we have just defined. And remember, k, uh, sorry, a is the fixed assignment. Only the m's are allowed to vary. So this shows that these mu values are the, uh, are the minimizers of the loss function when a is fixed. Let's see how do we prove that. For each Q and each I such that A I is equal to Q, the norm squared of X I minus Q uh, minus M Q is equal to this. So here we subtract mu and then we add it back so the value doesn't change. And then we open this norm. We're using uh, this quantity, uh, this equation. 
the norm of a plus b squared is equal to the inner product of a plus b, a plus b, and we can open that. And remember, uh, inner fun uh, the inner product of a and a is a norm squared plus inner product bb is uh, the norm of b squared plus 2 times the inner product of a and b. And here we consider this as the a and this as the b. Alright, that gives you this, this expression. And also notice that this term is always greater than or equal to 0, so we can drop that. That's why this value is greater than or equal to um, what's left. Hence, we can take the summation with respect to uh, i when ai is equal to q. So that gives you the summation of this term is greater than or equal to summation of the first term plus and we are using the linearity of the inner product so the summation goes inside the inner product and we need to use the fact that mu of aq here mu of aq is the average of the xi's that are in the qth cluster. So this term is 0. So we can drop this term and it ends up with just the summation of xi minus the q norm squared. And now we further take the summation over the q's and this is the loss function and that is greater than or equal to um, we replace this m by the q uh, by the mu that is nothing but the loss function when the m's are replaced by the mu's so this finishes the proof of lemma one next we're going to minimize the loss function with respect to a when the m's are fixed lemma two says that when the m's are fixed, the assignment that minimizes the loss function is given by this. Remember, an assignment is a map from the index set of the data points. So we need to give a value for each i in the index set of the data points. And if we define that, then the loss function is greater than or equal to the loss function when the assignment is replaced by the the assignment that we just defined. So the proof is trivial. It's basically just, the, just because of the definition. So the loss function is given by the summation of these terms and we just replace this arbitrary assignment by the assignment by the assignment that we just defined. So this term will be smaller and that is the loss function when the assignment is given by what we just defined. Now we're ready to show the k-means algorithm converges in finitely many steps. We define ln is equal to this quantity, assuming that the m's in the n step and the uh, a, the assignment in the n plus 1 step, are already given. And then we use lemma 1 and lemma 2 for the values of the m's and the assignment in the next step. In particular, using lemma 1, um, the m values in the next step is given by the average of the data points according to our current assignment. Once we have defined the m values in the n plus 1 step, we can use them to define our next assignment. So ln is equal to, well, this is just what we defined, is greater than or equal to uh, 
uh, when we replace the m values by the next uh, m values holding uh, the assignment constant and now we change the assignment keeping the m values constant so it's greater than or equal to the loss function when the assignment is in the n plus 2 step and that is ln plus 1 so we have shown that the sequence ln is decreasing and it's also bounded from below because it's always non-negative and by the monotone convergence theorem for sequences this is a well-known result in real analysis we know that ln the sequence uh, is convergent and because ln plus 1 is given by this and we can replace the n values by their definitions they are defined using the assignments so what we can see here is that this value depends on uh, only the assignments of course there's one this is one assignment which is not the same as these assignments but there are only finitely many choices for the assignment so the sequence ln cannot have infinitely many possible values therefore it must converge uh, in finitely many steps 